Uh, one second. Just one second. Okay, we are live now. Assalamu alaikum. Zaykum ya shabab, inshallah, tukunu kuisin. Lela, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Masa al-khair alaikum jamiya. Nitmanna tukunu kulikum. Bi alf khair wa saha wa salama. Lela, nitsaqikum fi sisilat al-maifat al-tarifiyya bi al-majal al-afriqiya al-handasa. والتقنية كويس أجت هي مجلة مفتوحة المصدر وخاضعة المراجعة المحكمة متعددة التخصصات وبتهدف لأنها هي تكون منصة للباحثين والمهنيين وصانعي السياسات من خلفيات متنوعة مناقشة ونشر البحوث التطبيقية في الهندسة والتكنولوجيا اللي بتتناول التنمية المستدامة في أفريقيا الليلة اللايف إن شاء الله حيكون لايف تعريفي بمنصة ساينس أوبن آه اللي هي مستضافة آه فيها مجلة إجي تي إجي إي تي المجلة المجلة الأفريقية للهندسة والتقنية اللي هي آه عبارة عن آه منصة فيها عدد آه كبير من المجلات العلمية كويس حتكون معانا دكتورة ستيفاني داوسون آه هي المديرة التنفيذي للمجلة وحتكون حتكلم لنا عن المنصة في الأول إحنا دارين نعرف شوية بالمجلة بتاعتنا المجلة هي مجلة مفتوحة المصدر معناتها أنه كل الناس كل الباحثين بيقدروا أنهم ينشروا ويتلقوا الأوراق العلمية المنشورة فيها مجانا المجلة عندها منشورات واسعة في مجالات الهندسة الزراعية علوم الحاسوب نظم المعلومات مجالات الهندسة المتعددة اللي هي بتهدف إن للتنمية المستدامة في في أفريقيا والمجالات التقنية الهندسية العلمية والتقنية وعلم المواد أيضا دكتورة ستيفاني اليوم هي دكتور هي المديرة التنفيذية لمنصة ساينس أوبن هي جنسيتها أمريكية ولدت في شمال كاليفورنيا الولايات المتحدة الأمريكية ودرست علم الأحياء في جامعة ييل حصلت على درجة دكتوراه في الأدب الألماني من جامعة واشنطن وعندها عشر أكثر من عشر سنوات بحوث في مجال الأحياء والكيمياء في كل المجالات في سوري في كل من المجالات ونشر الكتب يعني عندها أبحاث منشورة في وعندها عدد من الكتب في 2013 انضمت إلى منصة ساينس أوبن اشتغلت فيها اللايف الليلة حيكون باللغة الإنجليزية لأن معانا ضيوف بيكونوا من من جنسيات غير عربية معانا ستيفاني هي زادة غير عربية طيب هلو ليديز أند جنتلمن جود إيفنينج فور أول أوف يو توداي وي آر بريزنتينج لايف إن ذا إس آر إف بلاتفورم سبانيز ريسيرش فاونديشن تو إنتروديوس ذا أفريكان جورنال أند تكنولوجي فور أفريكان جورنال فور إنجينيرينج أند تكنولوجي تو ذا Research as community. Uh, Stephanie here uh, to introduce. Uh, uh, we have our guest Stephanie. Uh, she is here to introduce the Science Open platform, and we will continue uh, in series of the lives to introduce the journal in more details later. Stephanie is the COO uh, of the Science Open uh, platform. She grew up in Northern California, USA. Uh, she studied biology in the Yale University and received her PhD in the Literature Review. Uh, sorry, literature, uh, German literature from the University of uh, Washington. She spent over 10 years in the academic publishing uh, and uh, she is uh, here uh, as uh, the COO uh, of the Science Open magazine, uh, sorry, the platform. Uh, the AGET, uh, that uh, the magazine, uh, the journal that we are uh, here uh, today because of it. Uh, it is uh, an open access uh, peer-reviewed uh, journal, it's a multidisciplinary, that aims to serve as a platform for researchers, professionals, and policymakers for a variety of, uh, of backgrounds to discuss the disseminate, uh, disseminate applied research in engineering and technology. Uh, scientific uh, publication here in the broad areas of uh, engineering and technology, agriculture, computer information system, and engineering. Uh, today, uh, now I, I will uh, make uh, Stephanie to uh, introduce uh, her, the Science Open. Uh, 
uh, to the community here that attendees. <laughs> Thank you, Mike, with you. Unmute. <laughs> Thank you very much uh, for the introduction. I will share my screen now. Um, and uh, I really appreciate the invitation to uh, speak to you all today um, and uh, tell you a little bit about the new digital tools that we have embedded in our platform that can help you to promote your work. Uh, increase more, your research impact and um, support the brand new uh, journal. Um, so I'm very excited to be involved in the launch of the African Journal of Engineering and Technology. I strongly believe that there's a need for more research on sustainable technologies around the whole world. And I'm thrilled to see Sudan and Africa pushing ahead to create a new open access forum to publish and share those research results. I hope that many of you are planning to support this new journal by publishing your best work with them. It's always a risk to publish your research with a brand new journal, as I'm sure you all know. So um, uh, how you're do always ask yourself, hmm, how can you ensure that researchers in your field will notice your new article? Well, this is something um, that the new African Journal of Engineering and Technology being fully integrated into the science open discovery environment. We have some really useful tools to increase um, awareness of the journal and also of your own research. Therefore, I appreciate the opportunity today to share some of Science Open's features with you and explain what Science Open and the Sudanese Researchers Foundation will be doing together to promote your articles in the journal and what you can do yourself to reach out to readers and increase the visibility and impact of your work. So to start out, Science Open is a freely accessible discovery environment with a range of search filters to make your literature search more effective and offers interactive features for networking and community building. You can register for free and use all of our services. With over 65 million article records, a search on Science Open will usually produce too many records to scroll through. Uh, a search for wind turbine here um, uh, finds over 11,000 articles. But with a wide range of filters and sorting options, we can help you discover the most relevant content in your field. You can filter the list for open access, preprints or no preprints, sort by affiliation and more. You can sort the results by citation, date, altmetric score, I'll come back to that, readership as well. For example, you can ask, uh, oh here, my mouse. For example, you can ask the question, um, what research have we indexed with an affiliation in Khartoum here? and uh, sort those results by the number of citations, for example. You can expect, export your search results as citations, or you can save your search to come back again and again. And as I said before, all of these features are um, free. Uh, each article page provides a whole range of transparent metrics, including views, citations, recommendations, reviews, and more. These metrics are used to help sort your results to highlight important papers. The citation numbers um, are uh, only based on citations that we've seen within the Science Open database. So different services such as Google Scholar or Web of Science may track a different number of citations. The altmetric score tracks how often an article has been mentioned on the internet. So if you just click on the colorful donut, um, you can explore the altmetric um, score. Here, uh, you will find mentions in blog posts, on Facebook, Twitter, policy documents, and patents. This really just measures the amount of attention an article has gotten, and of course that attention can also be negative. So it's important to look at the full results. A digital object identifier or DOI is required for an altmetric score. 
And you can be assured that your article with the African Journal of Engineering and Technology will receive a Crossref DOI with very rich metadata to provide it with the best machine readable discoverability um, to really help that article get found on the internet. As the African uh, Journal of Engineering and Technology grows, it will be promoted in any search where even a single article matches the user's search results. At the top of the facets menu in the left uh, here, you can uh, a, a kind of a shortcut to different filter options. We show collections that contain some number of articles from the search results. In this example here for a search on sustainable urban development, we promote the Liverpool University Press Journals on Urban Planning and Development, as well as an open access uh, journal of green building. The collections promoted here can be either created by publishers or researchers. So more on that in a few minutes. But we're only part of the story. What can you do to further promote your research on Science Open and beyond? The first most basic thing that you can and really must do as an author is to share your newly published article with your network of peers. Traditionally, researchers used to uh, use conferences um, and sent author copies by post. Now, most researchers use Twitter and Facebook or scholarly networks to get out the news about a new publication. It can be as simple as just putting the title and a link to your article on Twitter. Here are some examples. Our new paper is out now. This can put your work in a wider context and get the attention of science bloggers, journalists, or other multipliers. And this can then be tracked in your altmetric score. Um, and like I said, uh, that um, in order to be able to track those, you need to have good machine readable digital object identifiers. Um, and uh, that's the kind of really strong technological underpinnings that we can really offer um, the new journal. Science Open makes sharing easy with the one-click share button uh, right here. It's marked in blue. Um, uh, you can, with one-click, share your article via Twitter, Facebook, or email, um, and also to the Chinese network Sina Weibo. This feature requires no registration, takes just a moment, and can have a real impact. You can share your own work or that of your colleagues or a paper that you find interesting um, uh, on Science Open. The next level of engagement is the option on Science Open to enhance the metadata around your article. You can add an author summary in layman terms in your native language or English, along with a catchy image to get attention of readers on the platform. This will help you to reach a broader audience, can encourage more community feedback, and increases the discoverability within the Science Open platform but for, by providing more text and more concepts for our search engine. Um, you might sometimes find that some of your articles don't have an abstract on the platform um, because sometimes publishers um, uh, fail to add abstract information um, to the Crossref database. Um, in those cases, you are welcome to go ahead and add an abstract in that space so that people have an idea about what your article is about. Uh, we. Uh, also like to regularly promote articles on the site with author summaries, so we often check um, and pick out the best ones to promote in our database. So how do you do it? First, you have to register on Science Open. There's no cost to it. Just click the register button um, from the My Science Open menu in the upper right hand corner and then register with your email, a password, um, you have to choose a discipline from all of the different disciplines that we offer. Um, or you can also use your face, Facebook um, uh, uh, login to uh, register. If you're an author of academic works, books, chapters, posters, um, articles, or just even hope to be an author someday, then click this box, are you an author? <laughs> 
um, in order to connect Science Open to your ORCID account. ORCID is a nonprofit organization supported by universities, publishers, funders, and other stakeholders as a central identifier of author names and publication lists. Once you have an ORCID ID, you can add all of your publications and you can take it with you everywhere. So on Science Open, to avoid what we called profile fatigue, um, we didn't, don't require to add your publications to Science Open, but we really just add and display information only from your ORCID. On ORCID, you can add uh, biographies, uh, education, funding information, etc. So ORCID can really be a central um, uh, uh, profile. Uh, when you publish a new article, you can update your Science Open profile with one click. Uh, and if you claim authorship of an article via Science Open, we will add that information back to your ORCID. Submitting an article to the African Journal of Engineering and Technology requires an ORCID. If your paper is accepted and published, it will be automatically added to your ORCID profile and your ORCID ID will be linked to your paper in the Crossref database and beyond. So there will be no question of who is the author of this paper. <laughs> once you list your uh, public, once your list of publications has been added to Science Open, you can navigate to your profile and uh, open an article. Now you'll see a toolbar of features here at the bottom to enhance the visibility of your article. From this toolbar, you can now add an author summary or an image. You can enhance keywords or modify the discipline of your article. On Science Open, you can then track your usage statistics and follow the development of your article views, citations, and altmetric score over time. Uh, just navigate to your My Science Open profile here, statistics, and then you can view, uh, look at the views of your um, uh, publications over time on the platform. So now for some advanced features. Uh, the Science Open platform offers a wealth of interactive op uh, options. And I would like to show you uh, today our collection functionality for community curation and our open article review functionality for expert members. So researchers are welcome to apply for editor status and create curated cur collections of, all, of articles on a topic within their field. Here's an example of a researcher-led collection on Science Open on renewable energy and solar technology. The collections have a set of transparent met metrics here across the across the top of the collection. Um, and they have a statistics page here, the statistics button, uh, and all search and sort filters from Science Open apply. So um, it, within the 213 publications in this collection, you can sort them by, um, uh, you can look for only open access articles. You can sort them by date or by altmetric score, um, by citation, uh, et cetera. These articles and books can come from any journal or publisher and can be open access or not, can contain non-peer reviewed preprints to openly discuss, or can contain only top research in the field. It's up to the editor and their goals. Researchers can create these interactive lists as community researcher resources for teaching, for promotion of their research field, or outreach to a non-expert community. Whenever there's overlap with another collection on the platform, it's visible at the top of the left-hand menu, right down here. Um, uh, and so in the future, um, uh, if this uh, editor here, Christoph von Fiederberg, um, were to find a paper from the African Journal of Engineering Technology that he really liked, he could add it to his collection here, and your journal would show up as part of this narrow by collection filter. 
So this is a way that we try to highlight the connections of people within um, within our community, within the database, um, and to give everybody some more visibility for the work that they're doing. Um, we add the editor's name to the collection, and we often promote these collections in our social media channels. Uh, collections are easy to create and maintain and update and can really help uh, can really help showcase your expertise. Here's another great collection on the red list of ecosystems. Here's another one on solar cells. Any researchers interested today in creating a collection on a specific topic are welcome to get in touch with me. Um, describe the topic, describe your goals, and we will help you to get started, um, give you editor status and um, some instructions on how to create your own collection. The next feature that I wanted to highlight is our um, open peer review. So um, although the journal, um, the African Journal of Engineering and Technology, will your articles will first undergo a rigorous blinded peer review within the system. Um, once they're published onto Science Open, those articles, like every other article in the 65 million articles on our database, is um, open to review. It's something that we like to think of as a book review. Book reviews, the author writes the book and then um, uh, researchers read it and review it and publish that review in, um, in another journal. This is the kind of review that we're thinking about. To give um, people who are uh, uh, looking for more direction, some ideas about um, whether or not this is a useful um, paper. And maybe you've even reviewed papers um, uh, in the past and you have those reviews sitting on your on your um, desktop somewhere, you can easily reformulate those so they're not talking so much about commas and um, and uh, missing paragraphs, but really sort of synthesize what's important about this article. And you can um, uh, post those on Science Open. Um, Science Open has an engine to invite potential reviewers. So you can also invite anybody, any of your colleagues that you think um, could also be involved. It has a built-in peer review questionnaire, um, an ORCID integration for reviewers. So you have to review with your own name because how else will you get credit? And you have to, um, and that, that uh, review, report will be given a Crossref DUI and will be attached to your ORCID record. So it's something that we take quite seriously. Um, uh, and, and, and we do promote these reviews widely on the site. Um, authors are welcome to invite reviewers as well, just with a click of a button. Um, after their paper has been um, published, they might want to get some um, uh, uh, feedback from the community. Um, and we also have some further sort of quick communication options like recommendations. So that's a one click. Uh, this is an article. I don't have time to review it, but I just want to recommend this um, nice article. Or you can write a comment um, if you don't have the um, expert criteria to uh, write a review. To review on Science Open um, requires that you have five um, published articles attached to your ORCID. So we really are looking for an expert opinion on this. If you're a young researcher, you can work together with a mentor. If you um, uh, have almost uh, five publications, you can get in touch with us and say, hey, I would really like to review this paper and we would be happy to help you. Um, so uh, if you read an article that is particularly good or impossibly bad, Science Open is a great place to share your expertise. In summary, I would like to thank you all for your interest and encourage your participation in this project. It's great to work with a group like the Sudanese Researcher Foundation that is so active in exploring ways to reach the highest, widest possible audience for their new journal, uh, the African Journal of Engineering and Technology. I wish them great success 
and uh, I will be supporting them in any way that I can. Um, but what they really need is your support as a community to also uh, uh, submit articles, act as reviewers, get involved, um, and uh, then I think we really can engineer the world to be a better place. I am happy to answer any questions that you might have. Um, yeah, thanks very much for the invitation to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, very much for the briefing. Uh, uh, it is very interesting features that uh, science often have uh, uh, public uh, review, uh, the review of the paper, the site, the collections and the recommendation and the platform uh, that uh, researchers can discuss the, the papers. It's uh, very interesting uh, uh, features. Uh, there's uh, uh, some questions uh, here. Um, Someone asked if uh, there is any uh, uh, scientific index, uh, indexing, uh, international scientific indexing. I think uh, you can ask, uh, answer. Uh, ISI, I think it's ISI. Uh, um, is so uh, we do not, so the, for, for a brand new journal, of course, getting indexed is um, the very first step. And it's a challenge for every new journal, whether that new mm -hmm. journal starts out at Elsevier or whether that starts out here. Um, every new journal has to go through the steps themselves. There's no platform that you can join that just brings with it all of the um, indexing okay. options. So yes. we do have, for one thing, your content is indexed on Science Open. So it is embedded in mm -hmm. a discovery platform. A lot of the features on Science Open are very similar to the kind of search and discovery tools that people use all the time in the libraries when they're working with Web of Science. The one thing that we um, do make sure that we have is very good um, uh, Google meta tags. So your content should be very quickly um, added to Google Scholar. Um, so that's, we have, um, uh, we work um, with Google Scholar to make sure that they can ingest and index um, the content on our site. We also um, can support you in um, uh, uh, applying for different indexing services. The very first step as a brand new open access journal is of course to join the directory of open access journals. Um, and once your uh, journal has been accepted in the directory, then uh, it can um, uh, Science Open can easily deliver content to that um, platform. And as your journal grows and um, uh, gets more mature, it can uh, and uh, is added to new indexing databases. Science Open is really there to be able to, with one click, send that data quickly and efficiently and in a very rich format to the, um, to the indexing service. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, researchers uh, may be afraid to uh, publish in a new journal, but with these um, very uh, interesting features, uh, they can, uh, I think uh, it can motivate them uh, to publish here. Uh, just one last question. Uh, is the mentoring service is uh, one of the feature of the Science Open or uh, maybe I missed that? In the... um, we don't have any specific um, mentoring services per se, but um, we, uh, we do encourage on, for example, the collection infrastructure that we have. You can really work with multiple editors um, and we often encourage people to, to, to find a team that's a good, that's a good um, combination of maybe um, a, a, pro, a, a professor with a lot of expertise and maybe a younger student or postdoc who has a lot of technical, um, uh, a little bit more technical affinity. So somebody who's got a little bit more time and techie and <laughs> wants to do everything, but they've got a professor who's like, uh, but I wouldn't add that paper because <laughs> I remember. So um, those kinds of, um, we, we often like to think about what kind of structures can support um, mentoring. We don't ourselves have 
really um uh we are ourselves kind of a small team as uh, as you are as well but um but we do uh, like to take time especially for especially for journals and people starting their own journals um we we do like to take time and 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 share our knowledge in that in that area because we want to see open access projects like this one really grow and flourish i think also uh, with the collection uh uh, feature. Uh, I think uh, people may, in the same field can meet and they can discuss and they can get uh, mentoring uh, if, if they want. They can post that yes. and they can get uh, some mentors for uh, to do the research. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. Uh, we are very pleased that uh, you are here today and uh, um, <laughs> it is very interesting time that we get today. Uh, yeah, uh, so thanks a lot, Stephanie, for the presentation. It was very, uh, quite informative, actually very interesting. Uh, there's um, uh, one question from uh, one of some of our audience, and I also have one question. So uh, Nuseiba Al-Bashir, she was asking about uh, accepting publications in the field of biology, specifically applied insects. So I mean, this is, of course, outside the scope of our journal, but are there any uh, recommendations from your side, especially that I know you, you, your, your, your background is in biology? <laughs> <laughs> I was actually surprised um, that your, your PhD was in general literature. I didn't know that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> kind of a mix, right? Yeah. Um, uh, in the field of biology, open access, um, I can recommend um, looking at the journals of the publisher Pensoft. Um, they have a really interesting, um, they have a really interesting uh, portfolio, a really quite large, I'm, I'm not sure exactly how many journals it is, but it's a really quite um, large uh, 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 selection of journals that are really all focused on biodiversity. So everything from zoo keys, phyto keys, um, and I know they have also um, whole journals that are focused specifically on um, uh, uh, different hymenoptera and um, and other species. So if if I had a, um, a, a an insect paper to publish, um, that would be the first place that I would go to, just just because I think they do a really excellent job um, uh, in terms of um, the 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 open access service that they that they offer. That. And and the good news, I mean, the good news is also, I mean, if you publish um, uh, something with Pensoft, those articles actually also come on to Science Open. And if you have published an article anywhere, when you add that to your ORCID, it gets added directly to Science Open. And if there's any articles missing, if you just go to your menu, drop down, and you see dashboard, the first thing you see is request articles. All you have to do is add the DOI, and we'll add that paper to the Science Open database. So we really try and make it a community effort because, of course, we sometimes are missing journals um, from different parts of the world um, and different um, topics and things. So, um, so uh, if you go onto Science Open and you say, oh, my paper's not there, don't be discouraged. You can add it in lots of in lots of different ways. Excellent, excellent, thank you. Um, uh, I have actually one question, which is uh, regarding um, uh, your opinion on the future of uh, the publishing industry. So like the, traditionally when I like started, for example, publishing, we only knew about uh, closed access journals where you, you publish, you don't pay any fees and then the journal is only accessible through uh, subscription. And then uh, we heard about open access. And now we're hearing about preprints. Uh, and uh, then we're hearing now about open peer review, where now, for example, when I review sometimes for some journals, they ask me that whether you want your review to be public. So, I mean, in light of all these changes, where, where do you think the, the, the industry is, is, is moving? What do you think would be more uh, sustainable, especially with regarding like access to knowledge for, for developing countries? I definitely see, I definitely see the industry moving faster and faster towards fully open access um, business models. Um, I, uh, I see 
preprints taking a bigger and bigger role and I mean, if I were still a researcher publishing, I would certainly take advantage of that opportunity to get my research results out there early um, and uh, start getting feedback on them and also, you know, put your stake in the ground and say, I was here first. Um, and uh, I think that there's been a huge growth and acceptance of preprints um, in the community. The new the, the life sciences journal eLife that's um, open access and has been really at the forefront of experimenting with technology um, solutions around open access. They're now requiring um, uh, uh, every, every paper published to also publish that as a preprint um, on the bioarchive server. So I think we're gonna be seeing more and more of that, um, especially in the COVID-19 pandemic, we've seen a lot of you know, people wanting to get that research out there as fast as possible. So um, that people are really working on the cutting edge of, of, the, of the research, you know, they don't sometimes have time for long, long winded peer review. They just want to see, can I just look at your data right now, right? Like they just, and they'll decide if that data is good or not. So um, I think there's still peer review has to happen. I, I, I think very strongly that we, need to have um, uh, peer review in place because the minute you have a system like that, you've, uh, well, such as the preprints, um, it's really great, but immediately you fi people find ways to, to um, take advantage of that system and to um, publish results that are um, uh, incorrect. And then it's hard to get rid of those in the internet. Then um, you have a lot of um, bad um, uh, junk research floating around that you can never get rid of. Um, so I really think that peer review is super important and the expertise of the community is super important. But on the other hand, I also see the industry moving a lot towards um, more and more towards things like um, thinking about thinking about how we curate uh, content, how we put content together in different ways. So this is one of the this is one of the things that we've been playing around a lot with the, with these collections and allowing journals to create special issues within their journal, outside of their journal, with their editorial boards, um, with their authors, create these kinds of post what we like to call post publication, you know, special issues uh, journals, um, because I think um, if you see you know, things go so quickly, nobody's going to start a new journal on COVID-19 research, right? Um, and because the next pandemic about something else is around the corner, um, there's so many topics that you really only have in, you know, hindsight, you can suddenly say, hey, let's put together all of our research on this topic and, um, and uh, give it some, um, uh, more visibility sometimes in hindsight is when you say, wow, we've been publishing all this research and now we realize it's all a really great match for this sustainable development goal. What if we put together content from these six journals and, um, and, and show that off? And I see that kind of, um, I see that kind of new, new way of thinking about how you, um, how you, what you call a journal and what you call publishing. I think that we're, we're in a process that kind of started with PLOS and the, the mega journal and, and is, is continuing on today. Um, but I see the, I definitely see that having a big influence on the scholarly communication system going forward. Great, thank you, thank you very much. Um, we have, I think, uh, one last question, perhaps before we can conclude. Uh, uh, Isam Ali from uh, one of our members in our group. His question is, uh, he's saying great efforts. My question is, is there any build in mechanism or tool to protect the rights of, uh, of citations as part of intellectual property? Um, I'm not sure. Uh, understood the question correctly maybe he's referring to uh, authors copyrights perhaps or, but yeah um, um, I mean everything that we publish and we encourage everybody to use a creative commons license and the most liberal one so a creative commons 
um, attribution license, uh, CC BY 4.0, um, just because what that really means is people have to cite you, right? They can't use your work without citing you. And this is anyways, the whole, the main currency in academic publishing is citations. So this is, this is, this is where I think there's, I, I don't see, I don't really ever see a problem. I, nobody's going to take your, your 10 page article and print it on a coffee cup and sell it in Thailand. Probably not, right? The thing that you worry about is that they might take your article and and put their name on it, and this would be this would be illegal in any uh, case. But otherwise, what you really want is also um, you want the computers as well to be able to read your 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 work. And this is what having a CC BY license um, uh, as well means for the computers. The computers know we can read it. We can use it, we could transform it, we could add it to our database, but we have to say where it came from. We have to cite the original, um, the original author. And I think that that is um, uh, the, most, the most important thing. No, in, nobody except for a small handful of, um, of, of big publishers are really getting rich off the scientific um, papers and certainly not authors. Nobody's getting royalties or anything, right? What you're getting is, the opportunity to 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 share those research results that you've built up together with other researchers and help the next generation of researchers to solve a problem, right? But you want to get credit for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, that would be my <laughs> my thoughts Thank on uh, CC BY. <laughs> Great. Thank you very much, uh, Maram. Sorry. Uh, Stephanie, there is uh, one last thing I want you just to talk about. Uh, um, preprint is uh, not widely uh, known here in our uh, research community. I just want you to talk uh, about it for our researchers and uh, how, sure. how can a researcher can um, uh, get uh, right. It, it is, uh, is it uh, CC BY also? Uh, it, is it uh, what credential? It, uh, can researcher have when, when they publish? Uh, how do yes. they protect their preprint from being published by other? Researchers? Yeah, a preprint um, is uh, traditionally a preprint is um, the manuscript of the article before you've published it with a with a with a publisher. A lot of times. Um, uh, researchers um, have their have their papers in this preprint um, mode for some time while they're getting preliminary research together collaborating with people going through different versions of the versions of the paper the first real preprint um, um, server was archive um, set up um, now quite some time ago and archive is um, focused on physics, computer science, material science. So uh, just a subsection of, of the um, uh, hard sciences. And in that area, you can always publish your um, preprint on archive. Pretty much not any journal in, in, in the world would not accept your article because it had been published on archive. Um, but for a long time, archive was that the only physics worked like that. And all the rest of the um, journals basically said, oh, if you publish it somewhere else, even as a preprint or whatever, we might not accept it. So researchers were very hesitant to make their, their, their research public before it was actually accepted in a, in a journal. But the downside was that the journal publishing was sometimes taking a year, two years, you know, your article was peer reviewed and got rejected and got revised and sent to another journal. And sometimes that whole process took such a long time and you had really vital research results that nobody could read. So the research community was getting quite frustrated um, and uh, really demanded from the journal publishers to say, hey, you have to accept um, preprints in other, um, other fields. It's always worth checking with a journal that you're if you have your heart set on publishing with a certain journal, it's always worth checking with them. Will they accept your article if you post it as a preprint in this, in bio archive, in psych archive? Um, so that's something that is um, 
still probably a good idea, but in general, you can be pretty confident that you will be able to publish your paper even if you first make it publicly available as a preprint. The other good thing about preprints is the whole community has decided preprints are open access. So pretty much every preprint server, some of them have a, a some of them have a CC by NC license, so a non-commercial, um, non-derivative license. Um, some of them let you choose what license you want to have, but all of the preprint servers out there are um, open access. But like we said, open access, a CC by license, whatever it is, non-commercial, whatever it really means that people have to cite your work. If they use your paper, they have to cite it. They can they can build on that research. They, they can maybe take that research and, oh, they get an early view of it and they can start working on their own experiments. And, you know, you might be in competition with them or they might contact you and say, hey, could we do this experiment together? I've got this, you know, maybe we could like get a really good paper out of this. So you never know. You can be in competition or in collaboration, um, but you won't know if you don't put your um, research out there. So I don't think you have to worry about the, and I've really heard very few feedback from people that they had gotten scooped on um, uh, uh, by putting their research on, on a, um, on a preprint server. So I think it's pretty safe. And in some places now with eLife, they even require it. Um, and it's a good way to get your author manuscript visible. For example, if you publish in a subscription journal, um, because maybe it has a better impact factor or you don't have money for an APC, <laughs> but you have a preprint of that article that is faster and free for everybody to use. In this way, you can meet a little bit the expectations of both communities. So you can really make sure that the people don't care if it's in a pretty packaging, right? Um, who just want to get really build on your research, have access to um, to that as a preprint and the other and um, and then you can still publish in 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 a journal that maybe, you know, nobody in your country even has access to, right? So this is the, those are some of the things that you, the, the things that you have to um, juggle when making that decision. And on Science Open, we have 65 million article records. We have almost 2 million preprints. And if you search for something, you'd click on this filter. Um, you can say, show me only preprints or don't show me preprints. You should always assume that preprints are not peer reviewed. So if it's in your field and you find a preprint on Science Open from any of the different preprint servers, you know, write a review of it. Any review on Science Open can be taken, shared. They can take that review and 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 bring it to their um, and and bring it to their colleagues. And if it's a preprint server that we don't automatically add to the platform, you can just add the DOI of your preprint, um, and it will also show up on Science Open. That, that's very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Stephanie. Uh, I think uh, we don't have anything now. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, uh, and maybe we will uh, meet you again. Very yes. Soon. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that we can meet again and, and uh, look at the journal and the content that you've published and, um, and, and really be able to show the impact that it's having and um, the people that it's reaching. So... I wish the whole team um, and the whole community a lot of luck with this new project. Thank you very much. Uh, I think we finished now. Hamad, do you have something to share? No, no, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. We're really glad to have you. And uh, we, we look forward to the, uh, hopefully the publishing of the first issue of our journal very soon. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. شكرا لكم جميعا احنا وصلنا نهاية اللايف ان شاء الله تكونوا قدرتوا تحققوا المعلومات اللي انتم عاوزينها ولو في اي حاجه ممكن تسالوا في الـ في الكومنتس بنرد عليكم في اي وقت شكرا لكم جزيلا